we got to talk about the new playoff rankings and maybe the path for USC, uh, why all of this really pales in comparison to what we uh, are about to have when the playoff expands. I've got X's and O's for USC and UCLA. I've got Big Ten West scenarios. Again, lots going on here towards the tail end of November. But let's get into it with the college football playoff rankings. Came out on Tuesday night. We all you know, watched and, and waited through the double overtime game. And then this is what we got. And it's basically exactly what we thought we were going to get. Georgia number one, Ohio State two, Michigan three, TCU four. Tennessee and LSU were at five and six. There was some question, I think, and they tried to milk the drama a little bit of like, was USC going to creep all the way up to six, in particular with LSU's performance last week on the road against Arkansas? It did not happen. So LSU LSU moves up a spot after beating Arkansas, who really was banged up, um, and they beat them by three. So, yeah, I mean, that happened. But USC is at number seven. Um, and really, everybody knows the path for all of the teams in the top six. The question then becomes, what's the path for USC? How does USC get into the playoff? And before I even start down the path, why don't we give Lincoln Riley a lot of credit? You know, and there's a few of these coaches that are in their first year at these schools. Sonny Dykes at TCU, Brian Kelly at, at LSU, uh, Dan Lanning at Oregon, Kalen DeBoer at Washington, Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame, Lincoln Riley at USC. Like, there's a lot of these guys that have done a heck of a job in their first year um, uh, getting these teams into a position where they're playing meaningful games late in, in November, and Lincoln Riley is, is one of them. So what is the path for USC? Well, if you really look at this, what you would want is is chalk in the SEC. So USC wants Georgia to win out. They want probably Ohio State to win out in the Big Ten. So then Ohio State and Georgia would clearly be in the college football playoff. At that point, then there's two spots. And I think from a USC perspective, the most advantageous thing for USC would be if TCU were to lose in their conference championship game. Let's say it's Kansas State and Kansas State is able to beat them. Uh, well, then TCU would only have one loss, yes, but they would not be a conference champion. Then you would be pitted up against a Tennessee team that would also be a non-champ and a one loss and maybe even Clemson out of the ACC with one loss as as uh, a champion in the ACC. Here's why USC would have a really good argument is look at what their path is over the next three weeks and the teams that they're going to play. While they don't have a marquee win necessarily on the board yet outside of Oregon State, they will have the opportunity this week in the crosstown rivalry against UCLA in a ranked matchup. They would have Notre Dame next week that all of a sudden has some great wins, including the win over Clemson. And in a head-to-head -head argument, that would be a huge uh, feather in their cap. And then potentially potentially a Pac-12 championship game. Let's just say for sake of argument, it's Oregon. That'd be a good Oregon team. Let's say for sake of argument, it's Utah. Well, then they could avenge their one loss, which is Utah. So USC has got a path. And, and again, I think for them, they want a scenario where there's five teams arguing over two spots. And I think that as a champ, that they would have a really good argument. Now, why, why is this still somewhat of a bummer? Well, because it could be so much better. And I want to talk about that very briefly because right now, currently, we have really eight teams that have a legitimate argument for a college football playoff berth. That's if you include Clemson. And I can make an argument that even if Clemson wins out, they should not be included in any argument based on the way that Notre Dame has beat up on the ACC this year, including Clemson and who they will play in their ACC championship game, North Carolina. But if you take a look around, Right now, there's not a lot of meaningful games as it relates to the playoff in college football, but there would be if we had a 12-team playoff. I want you to, and, and we just showed it right there, if there was a 12-team playoff as they have proposed in their proposal, that format, these are all the teams that would still be alive playing meaningful games as it relates to the postseason in the last two weeks of the regular season. There's 33 teams. Take a look at the SEC. You would have... LSU and Georgia, obviously still alive. You would, and then in the at large, have Tennessee and Alabama and Old Miss in the Big Ten, Michigan and Ohio State. Yes, but also everybody in the Big Ten West because there would be a defined path to the postseason. So all of those five teams. You would also have Penn State in there as an at large. The Big 12, as wild and wacky as the Big 12 has been, look at all the teams that would be alive in the Big 12. TCU would be alive. Kansas would be alive. Texas, Texas Tech, Baylor, Kansas State. 
all of those teams alive playing meaningful games late into November as it relates to the college football playoff. You would have group of five teams like Tulane and Coastal Carolina and Cincinnati. You would have more at-large teams like Notre Dame and Florida State. Um, you, you would have, obviously, the ACC Clemson and, and North Carolina. This would be so much better. Folks, we can only hope that this is going to come quickly, as quickly as we possibly can get it, hopefully in 2024, because the expanded playoff is going to make these last two weeks so good. Penn State, in it, they would be playing meaningful games. That game, Utah and Oregon, would not have lost all of its luster because of Oregon's loss last week. It would be a massive game. I think that this would be and will be so much better for college football because as it stands now, there's just far too few games late in the season that have true college football playoff implications. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoy that clip, make sure you click subscribe somewhere down here. From game highlights to exclusive interviews and rankings, we've got everything you need as a college football fan right here, College Football on Fox.